In this video, I'm going to be taking my Kawasaki Z1 Super 6 out for its first test drive. Due to the coronavirus, it's been locked up in my garage for the last two months. But anyway, I'm going to put some petrol in the tank, I'm going to fire it up and go for a ride and see what happens. And this will be its very first test ride ever. First thing I've got to do is put some petrol in the tank. Now I've got a gallon spare in the shed, so I'll just pour that straight in. With the cap firmly shut, I turn on the petrol tap to reserve. Then I turned on the ignition to check the battery voltage and all the electrics are working okay, which they were. The last thing I want to do before I take the bike for a ride is put some ZX1 extra lube into the engine. This helps reduce friction and save on wear, especially on a modified engine. It's just the job to use. The funnel fits really well between the outer two carburetors and is held in place nicely while I pour in the oil. About 200 millilitres will do fine. With the oil in, it's time to start the engine and give it a bit of a rev before I leave. The engine seems to be running fine, so I go and get my crash helmet and go for a ride. Z1 Super 6 is handling really well. I was quite surprised how nicely it takes the corners. No weave or wallow. I think that's down to the Hagen rear shocks and the slightly thicker oil I put in the forks. But the brakes are so progressive and nice. The twin disc setup at the front really bites. That was such a cool test ride. I've just got back and I'm really pleased. There's no oil leaks whatsoever anywhere, but my gearing is awful. This back sprocket is a 33 tooth. It's the smallest I can buy online, so I'm gonna have to make one. When I made my V8, I made a 30 tooth. And I think that's what I really need. The exhausts are all great. Nothing's came loose, doesn't vibrate, really smooth to ride. And I'm really pleased there's no oil leaks, but the carburetors are awful. I've got some bad carburation issues at low speed, but I can deal with that. What we'll do in a minute, we'll check the exhaust temperatures before it cools down. I'm going to get my optical temperature gauge. Well, I'm back with my optical temperature gauge. You can't do it on chrome, it doesn't work. It just reflects straight away. So I do it on the finned part here. And I'm getting about 62 on that one, 60 on that one, 56, 64, 73 on that one. I expect that to be hotter in the middle anyway. Um, 61 on that one, 69 on that one, 55, 64 on that one. So they're all not that bad. They're in, with, they're, in, they're in with a good range. But anyway, I'm going to get the carbs on some vacuum gauges and get them set up. And I think she's going to fly. 
I'm going to check all the spark plug colours shortly. I think it might be slightly rich as well. But maybe that's because it's sucking six cylinders through a four cylinder airbox. I may have to do some work on that as well. Maybe change the filter. But anyway, for the first test drive, well chuffed. I'm just going to remove the six spark plugs to have a look at the colour. You can tell a lot from the colour of a spark plug. If it's like white, it's lean. If it's black, it's sooty, it's rich. And I'm sure one or two of these cylinders are rich, or all of them, I'm not quite sure yet. We'll soon find out. So I've just pulled the first one out, and that one's really white. That, in fact, it looks like it hasn't run at all. So maybe that side's a little bit lean. Well, I've just removed the second plug, and that is totally black. That means it's really rich, that cylinder. So we'll have to investigate that. With the six spark plugs removed, you can clearly see that five of them are really white, indicating lean mixture, and one of them is very black, indicating a heavily rich mixture on number two cylinder. So what I'm gonna do is just check the air screws first, and they're out one and three quarters, so I've put them into one and a half to slightly richen up the idle circuits. With all six air screws now set at one and a half turns, I remove the tank so I can have a look at the carburetor on number two cylinder. I operate the choke and look at all the chokes individually and I can see that number two choke isn't returning home. The little lever that operates it is slightly binding on the side of the, of the actual plunger. So all I had to do was get a pair of pliers and give it a slight twist and it worked perfect. Just to help things along, I put a bit of ZX1 oil on the plunger mechanism. But before I can refit the sooty spark plug, I need to give it a clean. Now I never use a wire brush on spark plugs because it coats the porcelain with conductive metal and makes them short out. The best way to do it is to warm them up with a blowtorch. So to do this, I rest it in my barbecue, just because it's conveniently there, and I use my map gas blowtorch to warm the spark plug up. And this actually burns the carbon off and leaves the plug looking brand new. Once the spark plug had cooled, I returned it to the engine with the other five plugs and tightened them up and replaced the spark plug caps. Another problem I had was the ignition switch works sometimes and not others, so I need to replace that. The overall gearing felt a little bit low, so I'm gonna upgrade the rear sprocket from a 33 to a 30. The clutch lever had quite a lot of play after its initial use, so I reset the adjuster and now it's fine. I noticed when I was riding the bike there was a slight click at the front when I put the brakes on. The front steering bearings were slightly loose, so while the tank was off, this is an ideal time to adjust them. To check I have no play, I place my thumb between the bearing and the frame and using the front brake I rock the bike back and forwards and there's no play, so I tighten up the clamp bolt. With the steering bearings adjusted, I replace the tank. With the bike all back together, I need to go and research the rear sprocket. I need to find a 30 tooth blank and 630 pitch so I can make one to fit those Z1 rear wheel. I hope you enjoyed the first test ride of my Z1 Super 6. This was genuinely the first test ride. I am really quite pleased. I was expecting a few problems, like an oil leak or two, but I've got no oil leaks. The clutch cable needed adjusting. The ignition switch is a bit funny. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'll have to order a new one, even though it is a new one, which is quite annoying. And the carbs need balancing. 
I did set them up by ear, but I've actually just ordered myself a brand new set of vacuum gauges so we can get it running lovely. And the choke was stuck on number two cylinder. All it needed was a wiggle, but I gave it a bit of an oil as well, and that works great. So see you soon for the next proper road test.